time to put some fingers on these gloves. Welcome to doing fingers on a glove, or for a glove, actually. You will remember that we marked zero, so we will be rehanging all of the stitches for the pinky, which will be from zero to ten. Sometimes you need to use different tools. So that's what I'm going to do. I don't put any weight on this right now. I just go. Push the needle. To, I mean, push the stitch on the needle. Okay. So zero to ten, and then both sides. Locate the stitch, pull it up, push the needle through it. Now, the reason why I latch tooled off the waist yarn so that it can't unravel on me while I'm doing the fingers, because that would suck. You will also notice that I have the um, right side towards the machine because we want all of the stitches to be going the same direction. This is also why I didn't bother casting it off Instead, I removed it on waste yarn. It is not a fast process. But it is accurate. All right, so 10 and 10. Okay, we are now cast on. I don't want to accidentally get my work stuck on the gate pegs. Oh, for Christ's sake. All right. I'm going to put claw weight on either side. Reset my row counter to zero, zero, zero. Okay. Reload my working yarn. Remember I set the carriage back to touch at five. This is why. So that I don't have to remember when I go to do this part. This is the pinky. The pinky is not very tall. I'm only going to knit 25 rows. Okay, so that's 25 rows. I now want to transfer every second stitch. Is there a faster way to do this? Yes. All you need to do is to bring out your stitches. 
to forward working. So I want to transfer these ones about that far. Now, grab your lace transfer tool from Brother. Set for N. Click up your handle. Mine gets a little caught up in weird spots, so you're going to have to forgive that noise. We are nice and loose. We are now going to just transfer across. Here we go. And now you will see that every second stitch is transferred. All transferred. Now, knit one row or physically transfer all of these stitches closer together and knit one row. Your choice. I'm going to take it easy and I'm just going to knit one row across. Break the yarn, generous tail. Take that yarn tail. Put it in a double eye needle. Take off your weights. Try not to get tangled up in your yarn tails. Move your stitches forward. Move them back a little bit. Transfer. 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 Okay, you've now transferred them. Pull this through. Give it a little tighten. There you have made your first pinky. Alright, now we're going to move on to number two. Still 10 and 10, that doesn't change. The difference this time is that you're going to grab that same 10th stitch, so the one that you ended with, you're going to start with, so number 10 goes on to zero. Number 10 on this side, same deal, goes on to zero. You might have a little bit of a difficulty finding it in there, but once you find it, you find it, you lock it on, pull that back. Okay? This is the next tenth stitch. Grab it. Put it on there. This is the next tenth stitch. Put it on here. Put it on ten left, ten right. Now you just go fishing for the rest of those stitches. If you're lucky and you can use a 2 by transfer tool, use it. It'll be twice as fast. If the fishing goes a little hard, then use your pick tool, which I gotta do. This one wants to be naughty. Pick tool. Okay, on it. don't want to grab your your uh, waist yarn you just want to grab your work in the yarn or your main yarn okay I'll come back when I have this all up there I just realized that you need to be at uh, 11 and 11 because there's actually 11 stitches not 10 good thing I looked twice so this uh, one stitch got hidden right here
got sucked into the weight um, contrast yarn. So we actually have 11 and 11. I'm just going to transfer these ones over. One stitch. Not a big deal. It's my little calculation error. Sorry about that. stitch over and there is a hidden stitch well, that would have been really sad to have lost this one in the knitting and make it appear again okay it's right here Sometimes you lose a stitch and you don't even realize it. Okay, I'm going to move those back, those forward, and those back. Okay, so these are the end stitches from the pinky. We are now going to knit the flat for the ring finger. Now the ring finger, it looks like it's fairly tall compared to your pinky so instead of 25 rows we're going to knit 33 and we're going to do that for the next three digits so ring finger uh, naughty finger and pointing finger okay loading our working yarn Still tension five, that's not going to change. And we will knit 33 rows. That's 30. Let's, let's check with my finger here. 30. One, two, three. We're going to do the same maneuver where we move the edge ones up. Lace carriage. K carriage over, lace carriage, say a prayer, transferred. Piece of cake. Remove the lace carriage, put it back in its spot, come back across. You can bring these all out, forward working. And across, take off on, double eye transfer tool. After you leave a generous yarn tail. That's basically a rinse and repeat until we get to the thumb. For the thumb, we will only knit 20 rows. Because the thumb is, of course, a lot shorter. Yes, the thumb may look like it's the same size as a pinky, but you have all that room in the gusset that we made. That... Um, you actually don't need 25 rows. I'm going to remove my weights. And we're going to keep moving towards the outside edge. So this is like closing up a book. Double I. Now you'll see that I always start at the opposite edge that I finished. That way, when I seal it up, it'll be a perfect circle. It won't have a bubble in it. Don't tie the top so tight that you break your thread. Mm. 
Okay. So this is the ring finger. Tighten nicely. You'll see it's just clean. Okay. So you have your pinky. Ring finger. Naughty finger. Pointer finger. And that's how you're going across. So just remember it's 11 stitches, not 10 left. And 11 right. So 11 left, 11 right. Push them back a little bit. Rehang. And continue. I'll come back when I get to the thumb. There are times when these stitches get pretty naughty, like absolutely not very pleasant. One of the things that I have found is that you can bring them forward a little bit, put your finger underneath as support, and then literally stab the center. And then that, well, it'll basically pop up onto your needle. And then you just make sure that you're going along. Stab it. I hate to use the word stab, but it's true. Stab or jab your transfer tool into it. And then it goes right onto your transfer tool. Just jabbing the center or stabbing the center with your double with your single eye or double eye doesn't matter. And it goes right on to your transfer tool. And the last one, just like before, it went into hiding. Move it forward. See that little bump? Chase it into the hole, and we're on. Okay. Putting all of the yarn tails in behind so that nobody gets caught up. So I'll wait. I'll wait, reset, reload, and then it's 33 rows for the next finger. So here we go. Okay, so now we're at the thumb. Common sense says that we just hang them back on, which is absolutely right. However, we are going to take an extra stitch from one inside. That just closes up any potential holes. And stitch on 11. I'm going to do the support method. So support it. Okay, so here's that last stitch, pulling it up, okay, so that's the last actual stitch, and then we're going to move this stitch here, this purl bump, on two, all right, so we're going to repeat for the other side, so we have all this extra yarn out of the way. Starting from the outside in. Okay. Here's our last stitch, last needle. 
moving inward. Support between trying only to grab the white, not the high vis waste yarn. So we got rescued that last one, grabbing it between. Okay, trying again. Just grabbing the loop. Second last. Now, inside here, grabbing that pearl bump, moving it up. Okay, in behind, gather everything. Sure, it's not getting tangled. Two claw weights. Oh, that's not on there very well. Claw weight one. Claw weight two. Reset row counter. This time it's 20, not 25. Open the gate, close the gate, still at tension five. Here we go. I'm gonna move the camera back a little bit. Here we go. Sorry about that. Okay, back at it, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Same maneuver as before, but opposite this time. Okay, moving my carriage out of the way, bringing up the waist carriage, flipping her on. Okay, we're in, going this way. No problem. Put it back. Everybody's forward. Knit one row. Generous yarn tail. Move on. Double eye. Remember, we started on the other side, so now we're going right to left instead of left to right. We're moving weights. Okay. And If you're wondering what that noise is, I live with teenagers. And it's Sunday. Okay. That is in. That is now with them. Okay. So now I get the honor of stitching this all up. doesn't look like much right now but it will when I'm done I'm going to remove my waste yarn first and then I will do all the seaming okay you can see that there's no variation between the regular knitting and the fingers which is the effect that I wanted to have by using the method that I did okay
I'm still going to stitch it up. Okay. As you can see, I got a nice glove. This is all stretched out. It hasn't relaxed yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw it in the washing machine and then into the dryer and we'll see what we get. I prefer a way more snug hand section, so I'm going to change this up. Stay tuned for another video coming this week.